can see that. Well, let's see if you get the name of the show right, buddy. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, um... I love you, man. I love mm-hmm. you, brother. Uh, greetings, Slash Hollers. Welcome to another episode of After the Slash. Got it. <laughs> well done. All right, so, <laughs> we are with David Bergantino. We, uh, just reviewed, uh, Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror, Help Wanted, um, which was another delightful entry into the franchise of the whodunit Freddy, so, yeah, gonna miss them uh, yeah well we can always listen to them again on yeah I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna listen to them we're gonna review them again and i'm gonna give them different ratings based on how i feel at the time so it's <laughs> like in a year i'm gonna review this book and be like well i didn't like that pool thing so i'm gonna give it a four <laughs> and we're just gonna keep doing this in a perpetual cycle yeah but you'll you'll still you'll still like the 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 fry basket uh one that one, you know, classics like that never go out of style. Didn't yeah. that girl that got fried, like, put maggots or roaches or something in Laura's food? Yeah, at she, put, she put a roach in there. Totally forgot. It's gross, totally but it's not fatal, you know? I lived, in, I lived in Georgia. That stuff just happens, okay? <laughs> that's the, that's the, wasn't that Doug's girl, girlfriend? Yeah, the yeah, one that, the one that was manipulative. Yeah, that's Amanda Seyfried, by the way. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll dig it. She's got some range where she can seem like really sweet and delicate, but then she can turn on a dime and, and, and be evil. Or really sure. ditzy like in Mean yeah. Girls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know who else who else has range like that? I cannot think of her name right now. She's got a really cool name. She was in the sci fi version of the Wizard of Oz. It was called the Tin Man. Oh and Zoe De Chanel. Yes, so Zoe. I can see Zoe. As the uh, Doug's girlfriend, you know, being all sweet, and then uh, as soon as they turn around, you know. Yeah. Oh my God! There's gonna be a bunch of gro- grown ass adults playing teenagers in this. <laughs> <laughs> we did say the te- well, you're the one that put Jack Nicholson in there, you know. Well, you know. <laughs> okay. I didn't put. <laughs> I'll admit y'all, it. One of y'all put Jack Nicholson. Oh, okay, no. Okay, I think of Jack Black. I did put Jack Nicholson in there, but I said circa like 1950 or whenever the hell he was 18. <laughs> oh well. You know, so in, my, in my mind, L- Laura's Jane Fonda now. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> it kind of kind of reminds me of Mad TV when they make Stuart look like he's six years old. They just put some pink in his cheeks and give him small clothes. Well, <laughs> Mama said, <laughs> "Look what I can do." Do it. Um, Mad TV actually... underrated, underrated sketch show. Man, Mad TV was great. Um, I hated to see it go. Hey, SNL. Spooking each other. I, I'm hitting. I'm hitting miss with SNL because like my cast is always going to be like Dana Carvey, Chris Farley, oh, okay. Adam well, Sandler. You know that was that was the time the Dana Carvey era was was when I was in New York and I used to hang out with that. Ooh, did well, you know that? No, I didn't know you hung out with him. That because he yeah. was on there before all the other guys I was talking about. Right, so I yeah. was there with when it was Dana Carvey, um, uh, Nora Dunn. Um, uh, the names will come to me, but it was when I was in New York and I was doing stand up, and I met a guy who was a friend of Dana Carvey's. So I could go after a couple weeks. I could go to any um, any dress rehearsal on, or, and every after party. And That's by awesome. then I got to meet Dana and, <clears throat> and I mean, we were, we were never tight friends, but he, I could just say I'm a friend of Dana's and get into any after party. And then <clears throat> the, on the finale of one finale of one season was when like Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan were there and they got into a huge argument and stormed out. <laughs> and then I, and then, what Dennis Miller and then Dennis Miller is like yeah. dancing with somebody and he's got his tongue so far into this woman's ear that it's like coming out the other side. <laughs> and then me and Nora Dunn sat, we had gotten to know each other and we sat at a bar and she, she was smoking and we did the whole blah, 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 and just made fun of everybody who walked by. And then when it was all over, cause this was all in Rockefeller center and, um, uh, uh, the pavilion where the ice skating rink is, 
uh, when it was over, I didn't have anywhere to go because I was coming from upstate New York. And so I, they let me sleep in the writer's offices. And then when I, when I went up there and it was, everything was shutting down, like the cast one by one would like peer over the couch because I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting on this couch and go, night, David. Night. Night, hon. It was so cool. That is cool. And then that was like that was like the precursor to my favorite cast right there. And yeah. some of them, some of them are holdovers onto it. Mm-hmm. Um, like Phil Hartman was there too, wasn't he? <sighs> he probably was. It might have been before. It's like this was before. Like this was when Michael Myers was there as a side player. Okay. And I had another friend who was a like a PA on it, and he had red hair. And one guy, I forget his name, the lead writer would get drunk. Smeagol? What? Was it Smeagol? No. Okay. It, he would get drunk and get in the elevator with the, this my friend who was the, the PA and mistake him for Michael Myers <laughs> and say, hey, do you want, you want three minutes next week? I'll give you three minutes next week. Just <laughs> give, me, give me, write me a script, show it to me, and if you're... If it's good, I'll give you three minutes. And if you imagine what Michael Myers became, the idea that somebody was like offering Michael Myers, eh, I'll give you three minutes. If you're good, impress me, kid. Oh. It was it was that was the time I was there. That's awesome. It's Saturday Night Live has has had a really good history, and uh, it's like it's it, it has these moments where it kind of disappears into obscurity, but then it comes back again. Like right now, it's it's like a big deal again, which I think maybe politics has a big thing to do with that over the past like decade. Right. But uh, you especially know, especially bringing in Jim Carrey as Joe Biden, that's just yeah, stuff like, like the, that. The fact yeah. they got him to do that—that's just really random for Jim Carrey. Always putting that finger gun away. I love it. Um, and and Baldwin, you know, he did an amazing job. Um, but what I was going to say is like the Chris Farley cast, you know, Chris Farley, Dana Carvey, uh, you know, Adam Sandler, Chris Rock. They, they, yeah, they, they got Chris. Hell yeah. Chris Rock. They got to like take the ball and run with it for a long time. And then, you know, it was like this weird transition where like David Spade was like the only holdover and we got like Will Ferrell and, you know, and after a couple years that became a really good cast. And then for a few years, people kind of forgot about them. And then we got like our Kristen Wiggs and our Will Fortes, Bill Hader, Jason Sudeikis. Mm-hmm. And then you don't hear nothing for a while. Then you got A.D. Bryant. Uh, let's see here. Kate McKinnon. Keenan uh, Thompson's Les- been Leslie there for Jones. a long time. That's well, what I was going to say. So officially the longest running member of the cast. Who's, who's I've been, been watching episodes of Keenan and Kel the last week. Oh, mm-hmm. They're just so funny back in the day. I was going to say, do you know who was the longest running before Keenan? Um, um, Daryl Hammond. Yep, Daryl Hammond. He was on there for a long time. Uh, people didn't even realize it. Um, Tim Meadows was on there for a long time, too. He stuck around for a while uh, after, you know, most of the cast left. But, yeah, Keenan, I don't think Keenan's, I, I think he's going to stay for life, man. That would be pretty badass. He, I missed he did, What's like, Up all, With That. He did all that. Then he did, like, Keenan and Kel. Then he did Saturday Night Live. He, he just, he's had a very clear transition. Yeah. And going now he's got a sitcom. He's, he started at Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah. And Which, remember, he was in like Heavyweights and Mighty Ducks and stuff. Uh, he was in like the Mighty Ducks sequel and uh, those movies like that, uh, Heavyweights. Uh, he, he, he's doing really good for himself. Time. What's that? He's been around for a long, just around. Yeah. For, and uh, he's, he's one of those people that's forever young. You know, <laughs> he's still, and he, he's got a new sitcom right now. Yeah, and, I haven't seen it. And, and he's still plugging away at SNL. Uh, I, I, my favorite Keenan thing ever on SNL has been "What's Up with That." Uh, yeah, I love that that skit. Skit, uh, but you know what? What killed it was all the cast leaving because you got to have Jason Sudeikis dancing. You got to have Bill Hader playing Lindsey Buckingham. You know, <laughs> sitting down there, never getting to talk. And uh, maybe the, they brought it back last year. Uh, of the pandemic and they were doing everything like through zoom all their skits or whatever but i would like to see more reunion specials and stuff that would be cool but uh all right horror 
What have you guys been watching in horror lately? <laughs> I've only I've only really seen one thing. I, I started another thing, but I didn't finish it, so I can't talk about it. Um, I watched this movie. It it got horrible ratings on IMDb, but sometimes those are pretty good. You know, it depends on the cast, depends on the. It was called "You Can't Kill Stephen King." Oh, it it. I uh, beg to differ. I I have mixed feelings about this movie. I feel like if it had been the cinematography is great for a really low budget film. Some of the acting in it is really good. Some of the acting is really really bad. The idea is that they're going to Maine on a lake where I guess Stephen King lives, and one of the guys with them is the only one that reads Stephen King's books, and he wants to meet him. Everyone else is just there on the ride, and it's like a horror comedy. But then. I'm thinking, oh, these people are going to get killed like in Stephen King deaths. Well, they are, but they're the most obscure Stephen King books you've ever read. It's the it's these short <laughs> stories that were in his collections back in the 70s. Like, one person <laughs> dies on a beach, and it was like, oh, Beach World. And then one person gets decapitated, and it was like, oh, it's like uh, Strawberry Fields, or it's like another Stephen King short story. And I'm just like, did y'all not... Could y'all not do Cujo? Could y'all not do The Shining? <laughs> Could y'all not do any of that? There's a there's alludes to it. That's not the right word. There is Illusion. references to those, but I don't know. At a certain point, I was getting annoyed with it, and I just wasn't having fun as much fun as I thought I would. So by the time it ended, I, I was just checking my watch, and it was only like an hour and thirty minutes. I feel like somewhere in there, someone dropped the ball, but it could have been really funny or like a legitimate horror movie. Okay. Uh. I'm not going to talk about a show or a movie yet, but it is horror related. And <clears throat> I want to play a little game. Not a Saw reference, even though that that's, that's, even though Spiral's coming out soon, that's going to be fun. Oh, uh, I cannot wait for that movie. It's going to be so good. Scream 5 is on its way. So I want to play who is left to be the surprise person that's coming after Sydney. All right? I'm guessing her brother's cousin, sister's former roommate from band camp. Uh, yeah, because it's always these people we've never <clears throat> fucking met before. She's already had a brother that, you know, twin sister. Twin sister. We The mask gets taken off and it's Sydney and you're like, oh, Which was the real killer. Sydney? Kill them both. <laughs> Kill them both. And it's Take actually it Stu. It's actually Stu, but he went and had a sex change and got, you know, a plastic surgery on his face. Uh, to get revenge on Sydney the best way he could by becoming Sydney, and then he drops a TV on her. I actually have the perfect one. Um, I, do you remember? Okay, Sophia just discovered Jay and Silent Bob, and she loves them. So okay. we're watching all the Kevin Smith movies, and there is a part in Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back in 2001 where Jay and Silent Bob break into Miramax Studios, and they're going on the sets of all these movies, and one of them is like an unnamed scream sequel and this brunette is terrified of who's trying to kill her and there's a guy in a scream costume trying to kill her and she's like let's see who's behind the mask and she takes the mask off and it's the orangutan that jay and silent bob were chasing and she goes really wes are we doing monkey monkeys now and he goes what people love orangutans people love monkeys and then jay and silent bob run in and go we love this monkey and they run off and he's like i told you Oh my god. So I'm like, oh my god, can you imagine if it was an orangutan killing Sydney at the end? Wow. That, and the then, best, Jay and, then Jay and Silent Bob come in. The best Silent Bob line ever is no ticket. That's my favorite. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh so who 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 is coming after Sydney, David? Oh, Most geez. creative answer wins. Yeah. I I I would like to see the two, the original two, the original two murderers. What is it? It's it's Lillard and Skeet Ulrich. Yeah, and Skeet Ulrich. Yeah. But that somebody else resurrects who really wants Sydney dead, and that they're actually zombies. Like go go uh, supernatural with it. Yeah, just, just go. That, I could I could I could handle that. So you, it seems like you want to do what um we may have talked about this before, but um David, you've seen I know what you did last summer, right? Go oh, yeah. 
You saw the second one, right? Uh, back in the day, yeah. Have you seen the third one? Yeah. <laughs> the third sense. one is literally the zombie version of the fisherman, and he's going after a different set of kids <laughs> that have a secret about someone they think they killed. So the fisherman is now a ghost tracking <laughs> down people with secrets. So I'm like, that's not that far off what happened to that franchise. Yeah, because... <laughs> Darn. It, it was, I'll always know what you did last summer, and it, it was just, it was bad. The whole thing was just completely unoriginal. Here's the only way that I can see Scream 5 being entertaining, for me anyways. And that's uh, in the cold open, every movie has a cold open where someone gets killed, you know, <laughs> before Scream comes on the screen. In that cold open, it's got to be Sydney, Gail, or Dewey, okay? Right. It's got to be. Or Sydney, Gail, or Dewey are revealed to be one of the killers or the only killer at the end of the movie. Because um, Sydney and the shit they've been through, especially Sydney, that would drive anybody fucking crazy by now. When Scream 4 came out, I was like, okay, Sydney's the killer. Why else would they make Scream 4? You know, and all of a sudden it's her niece. It's like, really? It's like, I don't understand why people want to see Scream 5. What's let Who? Okay. Sydney spent, Sydney's like 50 now, and people are still trying to kill her? Really? There is something big to consider here. Okay, like, all joking aside. Zombie would be cool, but go ahead. One thing about Scream is that it's it it's self-aware. It knows it's in a right. movie. When they did Scream 1, okay, we're in a horror movie. Scream 2, we're in a sequel. Scream 3, it's a trilogy. You know, the third one opens up stuff about the first one, behind-the-scenes stuff. It... Yep. The fourth one didn't really follow a four. It followed a remake, which yep. was kind of weird doing that. But if we're going to follow the rules of a fifth in a series... Ooh, it'd least, be like Halloween 2018, a sequel to the first, and they s ignore the other ones. Maybe, but I'm thinking that if they're going like Empire Strikes Back, they might end on a low note and then tie you into the sixth one to oh, okay. have a perfect, like, six. That That's what... That's, kind of what i think it's not really who the killer is but i'm thinking if they're trying to drag this out like the format right. of a series they might have a tie into a sixth one well your idea right there triggered that idea for me like they could do the whole halloween 2018 thing too though you know be like this killer's trying to ignore everything that's happened to her since then is is williamson involved in the fifth one the writer? I don't, I don't know, but I heard Matthew Lillard was hanging around the set. See, that would, the whole reser maybe Stu didn't die. You know? The man had a TV dropped on his head. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But Children of the Corn Who has si it? Children of the Corn 6 brought back Isaac, and li Isaac was literally blown up in the first one. And in the sixth one, they're like, oh, he's just been in a coma for six years. How... Did he survive that? Maybe a, it's a like the fans want to see him come back. Who Maybe was paying his medical bills? And a nutrient bath with yeah. all the parts in it that grew back together. Who was paying his medical bills and whose custody was he released into whenever he woke up? Well, he killed his parents, so... I guess the kids were footing the bill, or maybe there's kid doctors like Doogie Howser. Right. Um, the caseworker, he killed them. Uh, well, and they keep making the movies, but they kill themselves when they get old. So it leads you to wonder why there's so goddamn many. There's like fucking nine children of the corns. Ch uh, then they right? did a remake I heard recently that wasn't that bad. I it was a lot that. closer to the original short story by Stephen King. But I didn't like that because it was a bickering, divorcing couple. And I wanted them dead from the first page. <laughs> you know, in the, in, the, uh, in the first children of the corn, it's like, he who walks behind the rose is just he who tunnels underneath the dirt. Uh, you know, that's, they could have called it that. That was a little, uh, up, that's a little disappointing in the first one. I still uh, think it's funny they got a 30-year-old to play the evil kid just because he has a medical condition that makes yeah. him look younger, but he's clearly like an Oscar-winning actor, but he's trying to play like a fucking 10-year-old. You know, don't even try to hide it like an orphan, uh, which yeah. was a cool reveal. That was a cool twist at the end of orphan uh i hear they're making a, i orphan. hear they're making a second one with her a second what orphan really 
apparently she hasn't aged as visibly as a lot of other people, so they think they can still get away with that um, with the, the main actress. Hmm. I, wonder, I wonder if they'll try to do a sequel to the Child's Play remake. Oh, God. See, I, I, think, I think the Child's Play remake is like Godzilla 98. If you had called it anything else, it, I would have no complaint about the movie. You know? I, yeah. I, yeah. Like, and had it not look Not anything. be Chucky, you know, yeah. and Andy. But, you know, just a, this doll that's like an AI that does what happens in that movie, but not be Chucky, not be Andy, just something else. It would have been a great you know, AI gone bad flick. Just like Godzilla 98 is an is an awesome summer monster flick. It really is, but it's not, but it's Godzilla. not Godzilla. Exactly. Um, so. Have you have you seen Moxie? <laughs> not yet. What's that? It's it's not a movie. It's it's a, a, a AI based child's toy like the like um, like Chucky from the the reboot of Child's Play. Oh, no, I have not. A friend of mine's been working on this for a few years uh, with this company up in Pasadena, and they just released it about eight months ago. And except for the fact that it's realistic in that it doesn't have arms and legs and is not able to actually run around, but it does everything and has the same intentions as the the design of the doll in um, uh, in Child's Play. It just looks cuter and doesn't move around. I actually felt bad for the doll in the Child's Play remake. You know, it was just trying to trying to do what it was programmed to do. I felt bad for me having to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't... They could have at least made the hacker that hacked him, made, given him a little more personality, and ma- named him Charles Lee Ray or something, you know? Uh, I... Something, but... I don't think they're going to make a sequel to that. I think they're going to start, they're putting all their eggs in the Chucky TV show basket. Like, apparently that's going to be really interesting. I mean, just the plot synopsis alone sounds really interesting. What scares me about that, though, about the Chucky TV show, is they're going to split it between two networks, between USA and Sci-Fi. And already it is so hard to for a good show to survive on channels like that, like uh, Krypton. That was an amazing show. Lots of people loved it. Couldn't pull the numbers. Okay, and now they're going to take a show that has about the same niche, you know, following, and they're going to try to put that on two networks like that. And it's already hard enough, you know, whenever they move stuff around on a on a you know a schedule to air it. Uh, that's what worries me about it. If it was on like a streaming service, I would think it it was golden. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm going to watch it, of course, but I'm just worried that it's not going to get a renewal. Um, Streaming's the way it's going, you know. Uh, ratings, they they try to hold these shows to the same rating standards from like ten, fifteen years ago, and you can't do that, right? You know. So, this is um completely off topic, but while we're talking Perfect. about mo- movies that might happen or might not happen, Sophia and I rewatched the Godfather trilogy, and a lot there there was not a lot of happy feelings with the third one for many different reasons, but. The the plot synopsis for the fourth one they were going to make, I actually really wanted them to make. Um, you know, in the third one, how Michael Corleone transfers all of his power to Andy Garcia, and he becomes the new head of the Corleone family? The fourth one was going to be out about him in the 80s trying to retake Michael's territory, but the flashbacks of the movie were going to be to Sonny Corleone rising to power uh, back in the 50s, and he was going to be played by a young Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm like, that could have been really interesting mm. to see it switch between the 40s and the 80s, like back and forth. They does... were... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, David. No, that's all I was saying. That does sound interesting, actually. I, did, I didn't, you know, confession, I didn't care for The Godfather. It, it ins- I have never you know what? watched any You're of fire all the way. It, it insists upon itself. I, I agree. It, it does a fam- get a lot. It's a family guy joke. It's a family guy joke. But no, like David yeah, said, I, I've never finished any of them. I, I tried. I tried like hell. And I wanted to like it. I really did. But I just uh, can't man. finish them. 
Uh, Sophia, she has this habit of <laughs> like <laughs> pointing out flaws in movies, and it and it's bad because she's right. Like she's in God. She was talking about Godfather. She was like, "What's their business?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" She goes, "Godfather Two is all about." We're about to start this business. We're going to make history. We're going to do this. She goes, never once do they explain what the business is. They only vaguely <laughs> allude to it. And I'm like, but I guess that's not the point. The point is that they're betraying each other over this business that no one actually knows what it is. Is it casinos? Question mark. It's well, corn holders. Maybe, maybe it's intentionally like it's like the suitcase in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. yeah. It's just a plot device. Yeah, it's it's sort of the, the the catalyst for things, and it doesn't matter what it really is. It's that everybody wants it. So I have a theory. Pulp Fiction was was not a masterpiece. Just the editor didn't want to do his job. <laughs> Possible? No, I, I, I have heard. <laughs> I love Pulp Fiction. I've heard the opposite of that, but with the same result, which is it didn't. It really sucked. In a serial, in a strictly linear order, and they went okay. fuck, it. and just and and figured out a way, and actually had to work harder to edit it to get it so that it looked, it seemed really cool, yeah. and you didn't notice the bad bits, um, and that everybody would get stuck on how cool the nonlinear editing was and not actually pay attention to the movie itself. I love Reservoir Dogs too. That was a great one. Um, yeah. Although I can't, I haven't seen it in so long, but I always remember at the end when everybody's like got a gun pointed at everybody, like one person doesn't have a gun pointed at them and they still get shot. <laughs> so I, I, I used to try to try to figure out how that happened. I'm going to have to rewatch got it. Got knocked out by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's my I, explanation. Know, there's not much Quentin Tarantino's done that I don't like. Uh, I got to be honest. Um, Did you ever see Four Rooms? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I used to watch. That, that. That's very underrated, in my opinion. I, I used to watch that on Stars uh, whenever I was like thirteen, and I thought I was getting away with something. You know, Did you ever see that, David? Like, the topless witches. No, I've not. Oh, David, you would. More love rooms is first. interesting because you know Tim Roth. Yeah. He's a bellhop, and he has to run the hotel. Oh, I'm familiar with it. I just haven't seen it. That's right. It's just cool how there's four different directors that control four different segments of the movie. So Rodriguez does one of them, and then uh, yeah, Quentin that does was, one. That was popular in the in the eighties and nineties. Uh, there, there were they would do these movies. God, what was anthologies? Anthologies with, and they would just take you know four to six, you know, big directors, and they would do shorts and then uh, a, a, a lot around a given theme. Yeah, they tie them together. And put them together. Um, yeah, the, the Coven of Witches. There's a Coven of Witches in one that's trying to use them nice. uh, for their uh, for their spell. There's uh, these kids left in a hotel room by their parents. Uh, it's a, Antonio their parents, Banderas is a gangster. Yes. Or that, that's the Robert Rodriguez one. Yeah, and in the bed is a dead prostitute. They find out. I mean, it, it's just it's some it's a really cool movie. And when it, and there's a lot of oh, and the last one. Uh, there's like these people having a party, like in like, if they make a bet and have to cut his finger off, and they try to get Tim Roth involved. He's and the Quentin only sober Tar one at the party. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino does one of these things where he goes on and on about nothing, mm -hmm. as, he's, as he's like laying money on the table to pay Tim Roth to cut off his pinky, to cut off this other guy's pinky, <laughs> and Tim Roth finally, just after all the talking, just chops it off and takes the money and whistles and walks away. Um, <laughs> It's a really good show. It's a really good movie. But what I was gonna say is when I was like thirteen watching it, I like thought I was getting away with like watching porn or something because of the top, <laughs> topless women in it. Uh, uh, <laughs> we've all been there. Yes. Yes. Yes, we have. Um, but yeah, put that on your list, man. That, I think you'd really like four rooms. It is on the list. The only thing, only thing I've watched lately is I watched the first four Terminator movies because I had just seen the last one which I didn't like um, Terminator was it uh, the one that Linda Hamilton came back for didn't uh, that ruin everything like dark fate and that, that yeah that's it it just didn't work hmm. for me at all I had to give up everything. on that franchise they just kept shooting themselves in the foot first it, I was surprised though because I thought 
I hated everything after the first one. First one is 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 good, but it's a very much a movie of its time. Um, but it's good. I, you know, it's fine. It's 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 what it needs to be. The second one, the is a lot better than I thought it would be. It, it stands I, I, up. I, I I ended up buying the 4K of that, and it was worth it was for ten bucks, and that's a movie I'll watch again. I, I was kind of surprised I hadn't seen it for such a long time. Totally hold, held up. Yeah. And then the third one I thought I'd hate, and it's just, it's got the problem I think it has, but I appreciated it, which was it was done by Mostow, who did um, U571, and it's a pure action film with almost no character development, whereas there's actually pretty decent character development in the first two movies. Three is just set piece, set piece, set piece, set piece, with just the merest sousson of, of character development. And then four is like a frank, well, well yeah, Genesis, right? No, uh, it was Salvation, Genesis, Dark Fate. Oh, okay. Then Salvation is the one with Nick Stahl. Yeah, and Christian uh, Bale. Christian, was Christian Bale. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. And that's the one. How do I know that? I've not even seen it. I didn't even know there was six Terminator movies. I, I know of them. I haven't seen yeah. after three. The one with Christian Bale, because one's with Nick Yeah. One's with Nick Stahl, and then the Christian Bale, and then the, the one with Christian Bale is terrible because it's like a Franken movie, and you know what they did with that? Yeah. Well, it was originally a, like supposed to be a Sam Worthington feature, but then they signed Christian Bale, and he wanted his role beefed up, so they rewrote his role to make him a bigger role. And if you watch the movie, you can see the war between the two versions of the movie. And it all just sort of tears itself apart. It's pretty horrible. You know, it's funny you talk about two versions of movies because there was that happened on another movie, and we ended up getting two versions of the movie, and that was The Exorcist uh, Four. The oh, right, Exorcist right, right. Movie. Yeah, it would have been cool to get two of the Terminator uh, Salvations. Uh, oh. I, I don't. I didn't mind having two options for uh, Exorcist Four. Like as a kid, when I was real little, I used to think. When every time I'd watch a movie, it could be different, anyways. So, you know, it was kind of cool to see a movie. They got two versions. Um, I will say, um, I have a way to tie this next thing into horror and Terminator, and I think that'll be kind of like my closing piece. Okay. Um, for slasher, um, the original creators of Terminator did not want to make an action franchise. They wanted to create a new slasher. Like you got Freddy Krueger, you got Jason. Now it is a cyborg. Or isn't a cyborg like part human, part not? I guess just yeah. robot. You just call him robot. Uh, so the Terminator totally. was supposed to be the next horror icon. But oh. it had a lot of sci-fi in it. So it kind of went the sci-fi action route. But uh, from what I understand, the original creators were just like, what the fuck? This was supposed to go horror. Which it has the elements. I mean, the first one's It does. Freaky. The first yeah. one does. The first yeah. one and the second one are night and day, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I kind, of, I kind of prefer the first one machines. personally. But look at Alien and Aliens, right? Yeah. Also, Cameron. Yeah. You know, game so, over, man. Game over. <laughs> yeah. Game over, man. Because I, I just, I also binged all the Alien movies recently. I probably, oh, yeah, I love doing that. And three is as bad as as and irritating as I remember it being. And the, but the um, the first the first two are fantastic. Um, three is terrible, and I, I don't actually mind the fourth one because it's just. I like the fourth one. Yeah, it's got a good cast. It's got, it's got a good cast. And it's got just sort of this weird vibe to it because of the because uh, of the director, you know, and and just three was just bad because she kept doing things that got people killed, and there was just no like no one cared and. And they, they ruined the whole thing from part two with it, you know, and they killed the character. And then <clears throat> I have not seen the newest one, uh, but yes. I did see like the prequel and I thought that was really oh, good. Yeah, like Prometheus and Covenant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, have, I haven't seen Covenant yet, but I know that like they were going to go one direction with Covenant more like Prometheus. And then like 
they got a bunch of backlash from fans, so they went in the different, made it more of like an Alien sequel. But I'm going to check it out just to check it out. But yeah, so, I'll, I'll be interested to see what you think. I I <clears throat> I am not a fan of either of those movies. Well, even though we've covered all the books, man, you, you got to come back on like after the slash where we can just talk about random yeah, absolutely. stuff. You know, uh, it's always fun to talk with you. Um, yeah, I like I like random. I'm a big fan and of. I can I can give my uh, thoughts on uh, Covenant, and you can maybe check out Four Rooms by then, and we can yeah uh, yeah. Have a look at. It just got bumped up to the uh, near the top of the list. Awesome. Well, we'll set that up and right. uh, get you back on. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun for me, too. Yeah, thank you, David, so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for writing the Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror books. They yeah. were a blast. Um, Which just goes to show you, just because the book's pink doesn't mean you shouldn't check it out and realize right. it is not a romance. It's actually pretty gory. <laughs> yeah. it, it's yeah. pretty gory, in, indeed. Um yeah, all right. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel on Patreon. Could not do this channel without you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sean. Love you guys. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs>